Sweeney's seventh annual World 100. Over 240 cars have converged on Eldor Speedway to try to make the cut, and 120 cars have had to pack up and go home. But we've determined the 120 cars that will qualify through heat races to try to make it into the 27th annual World 100. World 100. Over 39 states and three countries represented here at Eldor Speedway this weekend and over 30,000 fans on hand, a capacity crowd. I'm Wayne to get along with Barry Boyd, and Barry, I'll tell you what, you look around the, the facility here and there's not an empty seat in the house, there's not a fan that's hardly sitting right now. Well, Wayne, we've really had to work this weekend because last night is the uh, first night that we have seen this place packed during qualifications, and uh, it's just amazing that uh, the number of people and cars here, and all these heats are going to be extremely competitive as the best of the best is here, and uh, only three will advance from uh, heat race number one, and there's some good cars in this one. Okay. And, uh, if you were uh, out of the 16s last night, uh, you didn't make the cut. That's absolutely right. Uh, some good cars have, have not made the cut. Uh, we'll follow more on that as we go through the night's racing, but the competitors in heat race number one, all 20 cars are on the track right now, Barry. Lineup for tonight's first heat will be uh, Matt Miller in the seven car, Jack Hewitt in the 63. Row two will be the 17M of Dale McDowell, the B4 of uh, Jack Bond, the 6M of Wendell Wallace. Row four, Joel Crider in the 51. Bob Pierce, Paul Kuhlwan in the 32. Row five, Randall Chubb in the 114. The 12S of Terry Stroud. Row six will be the 71 of Don O'Neill, the 48 of Charlie Fisher. Row seven, the 1C car of Eddie Carrier Sr. races out of Hazard, Kentucky. The outside of him will be Gusty Christenberry in the C3. Row eight will be Jay Johnson in the five car, and alongside him will be the lightning rod, Rodney Combs in the five car. And row nine, the 18 car of Steve Landrum, the T20 of Josh Tarter, 15 of Rush Scheffler, and the 31A of Adam Stevens, who races out of Portsmouth, Ohio, will make up our first heat. And pace laps are underway, and Wayne, there's, uh, there's some good cars in this one. Scott Bloomquist, we might mention, set a new track record here at Eldora last night. New World 100 record. World 100, yeah. as uh, he turned at uh, 15.858. We had two cars uh, under the 16 mark last night as Rick Eckert also. Rick turned to 15.962. But the new World 100 record was set by Scott Bloomquist in the zero car, 15.858. He'll be starting in the third row in our first heat. And he was flying, wasn't he? Yes, he was. And he's got some tough cars in this heat as well. Uh, Dale McDowell, well, Wendell six, Wallace. 63 car, Jack Hewitt. This is his home track. He's run a lot of a lot of races here on this track. Like you said, Dale McDowell and uh, the Bob Pierce is there. Wallace. Bob Pierce, Jack Box in the four car. The four car's kind of got a new look. It's a mixture of blue and green. Last night, that, that car was uh, first. I mean, it just caught us by surprise, didn't it? Kinda the black's glow, gone. Glow in the dark, yeah. No, no blue and white there. Sort of a white, yellow, and a glow. Is that a green or yellowish green? But I think uh, one to go, and the pace truck's going off. We'll be ready to go, Wayne. Crowd's on their feet. I would estimate over 30, 35,000 fans here, and they're ready for the first laps of racing for the 1997, the 27th annual World 100. $30,000 will be awarded to one driver here to make it through the feature race tonight. Well, the lines are still backed up, people trying to get in, and they're just, uh, I don't know. Do you see any place to put them? Put them? <laughs> We're getting ready to go green. We are going green as Matt Miller will start them. Top three will advance to tonight's feature. Miller got a good jump there, Wayne. Miller pulls out, now we got a car in the wall. That looks like the 32 car. Or check that. 12 car into the wall, I believe. 12S of Terry's true. Caution does.
does not come out. He's still running. He's still running, so they did not throw the caution. Now the 63 car view, it bounces off the Oh, he gets into Bloomquist. Now the caution will come out. We've got cars turned sideways yes. all down the back straightaway, but we've got a car in the wall in turn number two. Look like as if Bloomquist's car is damaged, but he was caught up in that. And we do know that the one down here, as soon as we can get the number on that between turns one and two, heavy damage to that car. And what's smoke coming out? That's Randall Chubb smoke. I'm, I'm sure Randall Chubb's got some. Uh, He's got something rubbing. Sheet metal rubbing the tire. What? The, Bl the Bloomquist. Car. Yeah. He dodged. A, he dodged a bullet there, didn't he? Certainly did. A couple of cars. Uh, the 12S car. Has gone into the pits terrace roof. He had problems on the first lap. Wrecker crew out there in turn number two, a car parked up against the wall. It's hard to tell. At this angle, it's almost impossible to get the number, but gosh, these guys. Yeah, Randall uh, Chubb, heavy smoke coming off. Uh, looks like the left rear. Hopefully, that is just sheet metal rubbing. Pulled up down here in turn one. That's the 48 car there, a Fisher, Charlie Fisher, the 48 car. One of the teammates of uh, Donnie Moran. He's got an identical car to Donnie Moran's. It does. That's uh, it's. We're told the three car is the one that's into the wall. Okay, the three car. That's Christopher. Yesty Christian Murray. It is. So, Gusty, the night will be short for him. Gusty got into the wall uh, coming into turn number one, and he's parked about halfway between one and two up against the wall. The wrecker crew up there trying to get to him. We might want to mention, too, Wayne, that uh, cars didn't hot lap. This is a green track, and it, it is fast. It certainly is. They started on here just, just a little while ago, and, uh, and it just came through. Randall's car did. There's heavy uh, damage to the front of Randall Chubb's uh, 114 car. There's a couple of cars that got sideways on the back straightaway there. See the 48 car still sitting down there and nobody is really attending to it. We'll take another look at Randall Chubb as he comes around as that car is banged heavily in the front and we know there's side, the left rear sheet metal is rubbing. I didn't see what got him from the front, did you? Not sure, the, the uh, 63 car of Hewitt originally got into the wall in front of him, I'm thinking. It got everybody on the brakes and it's like Randall got into the rear of somebody else. That could very well have been the uh, 48 car, Charlie Fisher, that's sitting down here. Yeah, that's a good uh, Randall should have been in front of the four. Well, Wendell Wallace got is into car Wendell Wallace now. Is yeah. Done. Wendell Wallace sticks in the car. There you see Randall Chubb, and he's close Bank. to having a damaged radiator there. He sure is. Rodney Combs sporting a new car here. Uh, new color scheme also in the Lance car. White. A lot of pretty cars here as the uh, color schemes have changed and uh, some of them uh, we didn't recognize when we first got up here. It's been a long two days for us. Yes. Lineup has not changed a lot except for the fact that they're going to rule that Jack Hewitt did stop on the track of the 63 car. He's going to the tail. Jack Hewitt started down the uh, front row to the outside. He Jack qualified. Hewitt's always had terrible luck when it comes to the big races, but on a regular show, he's, he's one of the toughest drivers to beat on this racetrack. He turned to 16.402 last night. Should be going green the next time by. It is Matt Miller, Dale McDowell, Wendell Wallace, Scott Lundquist, Jack Box, Bob Pierce. Top six cars. And we have the uh, 51 car, uh, Joel Kreiderman. Chubb, Cur Chubb currently eighth, Don O'Neill, Eddie Carrier Sr. Nine. Some good cars up there in front though, and only three wheel transfer. They're on the gas as they go down the back straightaway, and 
Wendell Wallace was off a couple of spots already. Wendell Wallace fell asleep on the restart. Miller and Dale McDowell is pulling away. Lopez is right at third. It is a two-car breakaway, but I think Scott Lopez in the third place is gaining on him. Three and four, and McDowell pulls all alongside of him, coming out of four down the front straightaway. Miller leads the lap, followed by McDowell, Scott Luke with Jack Fox, and Wendell Wallace. Luke just had to check up there, Wayne, and here comes Fox after him. underneath McDowell, he's having to check. Caution is out as the 51 car of Joel Kratterman sits in turn, the entrance of turn number three. He smacked the wall pretty good over there. I think after the restart, Kratterman was having his problems and he ends up against the wall there in turn three. We'll see if Matt Miller gets uh, the good jump that he has gotten uh, prior on the uh, two uh, prior stars. Dale McDowell's right there with him, isn't he? And when yeah, Blumquist, McDowell took a look under under Miller, and Blumquist was, hey, he had to check. Blumquist was looking underneath McDowell. Jack Box is more or less just sitting back there in fourth spot. has kept the tire out there even though there is smoke. Coming off the rear, he's now in, uh, well, has he kept it out there, Wayne? You see the 114? I think Randall may have taken it in. I believe you're right. I think Randall Chubb has gone to the pits, and in fact, he is not on the track. I don't see his car being attended to anywhere around the track, so he's had some tough luck here. It looked as if the, the front part of the the nose of the car is pushed up into the radiator. As a matter of fact, the radiator looked open, and I'm sure that uh, I'm sure the radiator probably got clogged here once it got back to back to racing because there was no didn't look like anything to keep dirt out of the radiator. And from what we could see when he came around, that would have had to be where he got into Wendell Wallace. Check the line up here. They'll probably take the one to go next this time by. It is Matt Miller, Dale McDowell, Scott Bloomquist, Jack Fox, Wendell Wallace, Bob Pierce, Don O'Neill, Eddie Carrier Sr., Rodney Combs, Jay Johnson, and let's see, Josh Tarter. 28 car out there as well. 28 car is, uh, we're not showing a 28 on the lineup. We do have a 28 out there. We'll have to check that. Steve Landrum can see them all as he's at the rear of the field in the 18. Synergy car. Another good start, but this time Bloomquist is not going to let them get away from him. Miller pulls out to about a three, four car length lead, and it's a battle for second there between Dale McDowell and Scott Bloomquist. Boggs is putting a lot of pressure on Bloomquist now. Bloomquist throws it into three extremely hard. He may have McDowell clear. McDowell's going to hold him off. And Boggs is looking to slide underneath Bloomquist. He's got him. Tucks up, takes over the third spot. Bloomquist pulls back alongside of him, coming into turn number four. And his Boggs currently in third. Last and fourth. Wasn't that a beautiful move by Boggs? Well, 
think Blomquist tried to make the move underneath McDowell coming out of four, and he lost ground on it. That allowed Boggs to catch Boggs, up with him. Boggs is flying now, Wayne. He's right up on McDowell. Halfway, it is Miller, McDowell, Jack Boggs, Scott Blomquist, Wendell Wallace. Then Bob Pierce, Don O'Neill, Eddie Currier battling now with Don O'Neill for the seventh spot. Blomquist as a fast qualifier is guaranteed a starting position. He is currently in fourth right now. Box is uh, getting into three and four. Blomquist, now Scott Blomquist really hits the wall. second now see some smoke coming out of the four car box I, I believe Wayne that may have been the 17 of McDowell let's watch him through the turns I think McDowell is the one that smoke coming out of Bob. Well, the two cars were running pretty close uh, Bob has backed off a little bit thought maybe he had some problems there Scott Blumquist has gone into the pits he does want any more of this. That is McDowell. Smoke is coming from the 17th car, Dale McDowell. So if he can hold on for a second spot, he's... Box is going to pick him off, Wayne, I think. Yeah. Well, Box taps the wall and three. 17 cars blown up now. Dale McDowell is on the white flag lap. I don't know if he can make it around for another turn or not. Goes down the back straightaway. Miller going into three. McDowell may be able to hold on. As he has blown strong cloud of smoke. And he's going to get that spot. It is Matt Miller, Jack Fox, and or Matt Miller, Dale McDowell, and Jack Fox, top four. Eddie Carrier spins over in turn number three after the crosses line after he finishes about eighth, I think. The big question, Wayne, is Dale McDowell going to be able to go? I think McDowell could probably do enough work on that. Uh, on that car, he may have to change an engine in it. I'm not sure what the policy is here at Eldora Speed Speedway, but Dale McDowell has earned himself a spot by the skin of his teeth into the 27th Annual World 100. Real impressed there with uh, Matt Miller, wasn't you? Miller got out there and uh, he took it from wire to wire. Certainly did. He raced number one in the books back to Eldora Speedway in just a moment with heat race number two. Give us a minute. They read, count us because we can't hear that ID. Speedway as the cars for heat race number two has come onto the track for the parade lap and advancing in an exciting first heat was Matt Miller comes out the winner. Dale McDowell will advance as he finished second with a blown engine, I think, Wayne. I believe the engine was gone. I'm sure it was. And Jack Boggs has moved into the feature with a third place finish. Lineup for the second heat will be Eddie Carrier Jr. on the pole. Oh, I'm sorry, I, that's uh, the fourth one. Let's go down here, Wayne. Uh, Mike Jewell's on the pole, isn't he? It certainly is. Okay, Mike Jewell on the pole. Wade, Wade Knowles to the outside. Dan Schlipper will run third. Ronnie Johnson in this one. Chattanooga Flash will start to the outside row, too. Jimmy Mars, who won the dream here earlier. Rick Ecker, he turned a 15.962 last night. Roger Best, Rod Conley, will be in this heat. Joe Izzo, H.E. Vineyard, Sean Holliday, who races out of Portsmouth in the 66 car. Gary Stuhler, the beast from the east, in the 19 car. The three car, Rick DeLong, the 32R of Jim Rarick, the 21 of Lane Meyer, the B1 of David Burks, the 90 of Lance, Lance Mathis, the 33 of Steve Russell, the one of Vic Hill, 
the 81 off Jeff Mounds. And Wayne, that's a good indication. Uh, some of these guys we haven't seen, and we've been to practically all the tracks. A lot of these guys from up north down here. Yeah, there's a lot of cars from Illinois and Mich Michigan uh, on hand, more so than what you normally see here. It's the most I've seen from Michigan. Well, it's the most cars they've ever had at the racetrack here for World 100. 240 cars on hand. Half of them going home, though, unable to run, and unable to make the field. And probably be a pretty good race out of those other 120. Hey, Jimmy Myers in that 28 car is for real. As he won, we saw him win the dream here in uh, June. He qualified eighth with a 16.124. He'll be uh, running uh, right alongside Rick Eckert. Rick Eckert, he turned a 15.962. So, just some of the names in this one to look at. Wade Knowles, Ronnie Johnson, Jimmy Mars, Rick Eckert, Joe Izzo. Hey, there's a Gary Stuhler, a lot of good cars. Well, the indi indica indicator for that is uh, you, you can't really go by the qualifying time because Matt Miller, who just won the first heat race, was the 36th qualifier. And, of course, they do invert the field, and Miller uh, didn't have too many problems winning that first heat race, and he had some of the toughest cars in the country running behind him. We're getting ready to go to green. Line up set, they're tightened in, and Mike Jewell and Wade Nose on the front row. Base cars off. Mike Jewell will start them out of turn number four. Jewell takes a point. Ronnie Johnson's picked up couple of spots there. He falls in behind Wade Knowles in third spot. Rick Eckert got out of shape there and brought it back under control. As Johnson is trying to get through there. Man, he is he moving. We're not going to have a start. They throw the caution. And Ricker must be debris. I'm not sure if it's debris or they know didn't like Down here is okay, Sean Holiday yes. banged up over here. Yes, down to the low side of the track there on the back straightaway. 66 of Sean Holiday. It looks like to be one of Dave Burks down there. So they got together on lap number one. And Holiday looks to have some substantial damage. Burks has got front end damage. We'll have front quarter panel. Holiday goes into the pits. Sean Holiday damage to the left rear of the car near the left rear tire. If you've never been to Eldora, when you come up here, it's a war. Well, you're going at extremely high speeds and, it do, and the slightest contact, contact can put a car out of contention here on the track. I think this is, we want to have a complete restart. Yeah, this is the finest that I've seen this track in the last two or three years for a World 100. The weather I think has been cooperative with them and I think it's one of the reasons why they Bypass the hot laps. I like and that. Get onto the race. Wayne, yeah, I like that. Just let them start on a green track. Well, I think, you know, drivers were out there yesterday had a chance to hot lap, uh, one session of hot laps and two qualifying laps. Uh, gives them a pretty good feel, and, uh, you know, it's fair for one man as it is the other one, so. So, Sean Holiday, we can scratch him as. He gets banged in turn two. That puts Dave Burks to the rear of the field. That's, a, that's who he uh, tangled with was Burks. We're getting ready to go back to green. Knowles and Mike Jewell take off coming out of turn number four. going to lose a spot if he doesn't get on that throttle. Now he does and he's got diving underneath Ronnie Johnson. Coming by the first lap, Wade Knowles leads it. Mike Jill second. And it's Ronnie Johnson and Rick Eckert side by side. Jimmy Mars in fifth as they pass under the flank stand going now to the back. Three wide, away. four wide. Ronnie Johnson trying to get underneath Mike Jewell. He does it. Johnson moves up to second. Eckert follows him into third spot. Now Jimmy Mars trying to come around. He takes over fourth. Racing Wayne, that's let Wade Knowles check out. But here comes Johnson and Eckert. Jimmy Mars now trying to pick up some ground on Eckert running through the low 
portion of the racetrack. Eckert's going, he's going to look underneath Johnson. Can't clear him. His hands full with Jimmy Mars. Looks at him again in turn three. When we got one into the wall, he saves it down here in four. That's 19 car Perry Stewart. He had been racing with a 71 R of Rod Conley for the seventh spot. Conley takes it over. Now Conley working for the sixth, but back up front, we've got Eckert and Ronnie Johnson once again in a battle. Hey, that was Gary Stuhler at Bank Wall down here. We got parts flying off of the 32 car. Debris between three and four. That was off Jim Rarick. There's debris down there. It's high in the bank. Big pack of cars about a half a straight away ahead of the leader. Rick Eckert going up. Eckert has stopped on the back straightaway. And we're going to have a caution come out as Rick Eckert is posting around turn three. I think, uh, I don't know if something happened to the car. He's going to point out the debris. Wayne, there's, there's a lot of debris up between three and four. Now the caution is drawn. Let's see what the ruling is. did come out for the 24 car and parts are off uh, the 32R of Jim uh, Rary. That is what Eckert's pointing out. Well, I think Eckert is pretty much disabled right now, probably with uh, axle problem or rear end problem, something of that nature. I don't think he had an engine problem. The car simply just coasted down the back straightaway. Coming around the 84 car and 32, the 84 of uh, Roger Best is banged up pretty good. There's been some good contact among uh, several cars on the track right now. Rick Eckert is coming off, and uh, if he can go, he's as sure to spot as he was. He had second fast time. They are picking the debris up now. Eckert will have to have a push on into the pits. So they'll need to get that car ready to go for the feature as with second fastest time, he's assured a spot in the feature. And was moving up there on the, on the, on the five car of Ronnie Johnson. Now let's see what Jimmy Myers can do with Ronnie Johnson. Jimmy Myers had been coming through three and four uh, real low on the racetrack and was actually making some ground up. Ronnie Johnson ran a little bit closer up to the wall through the turns. Close to the midway point here in the second heat race here at Eldora Speedway. 27th Annual World 100. Your leader is Wade Knowles. Second place is Ronnie Johnson. The third place car now, the 28 car of Jimmy Mars. Dan Schlieper running in fourth. to see some of the numbers on the cars from the distance we're at right now. Rod Conley's uh, running sixth. As they come around, we'll see who's between him and Sleeper. But he is in the sixth spot. Sleeper, we've got two number nines here, Wayne. That's Mike Jewell. Mike Jewell is running in the, in the third spot. Third spot. Sleeper runs fourth. Oh, Jewell running third. Eight, run, yeah, or fourth and fifth. Fifth. Jewell running fourth, Sleeper in uh, both number nine. that may have knows coming out of four and five aside. Now knows pulls out to 
the three, four car lengths straightaway lead. Here comes Jimmy Myers. Straightaway, rather. Get in the corner, Danny. Right now, this is all Wade Nose. Now, Wade Nose has kind of got away from Ronnie a little bit. Ronnie trying to close up on him. Ronnie is currently the second spot. back up in the high groove, but when he comes down low to try to pass him, that's where he loses ground. That's where Nose is holding him off and pulling away from him. Nose getting a real good fight up high. White flag out for Wade Nose as he motors through turn one and two. Ronnie Johnson about 15, 20 car lengths behind him, and then it's almost that distance. six spot. We've got six set for the feature and uh, well we know we've got eight because Bloomquist, if he and Rick Egger can go, that'll be eight of the cars but uh, some of the best racing I've ever seen up here Wayne. Absolutely is. Two heat races in the books. Four to go. Be back with number three from Eldor Speedway in just a moment. Turn the mics up a little bit. We just need a minute. Back here at Eldora for heat race number three. Starting on the pole will be the double zero of Booper Bear, the 77 of Robbie Starnes to the outside, the 33 of Al Perky, the 75 of Terry Phillips, Billy Moyer Jr. in the 21 car, the 16 of Tony Izzo Jr., the 10A of Audie McWilliams, the 7 of Frank Reber, the 54 of Mike Head, double zero of Mark Barber running a Rayburn car, the 11M of Rusty Meisner, the 17 of a local boy from Martin, Kentucky, Shannon Thornsbury, the 27 of Jerry Radetzky, the 5 of Tony Marks, 1A of Charlie Schwartz, 53 of Ray Cook, the 114 of Joe Johnson, G14 of Ray Godsey, the 25 of Andy Ginsman, and racing out of Martin and also Prestonsburg, Kentucky, as I guess would be, either of those would be his home base is Paul David Harris. I think we've got one to go here, Wayne. The pace truck will come off. Got two cars that have been put to the tail. The 27 car and the G14. G14 is Ray Godsey. Also and the uh, 27 uh, Jerry Radetzky. Yeah. Probably a little bit late getting to, to the staging lanes. And well, Godsey didn't lose a lot as he was uh, starting 18. It's hard to get through a field 15 laps, especially with the caliber of cars we have here. Well, I'm curious to see how Charlie Schwartz did, will do. Booper Bear. Back there in the eighth row. Booper Bear is going to start them this time. 
Alongside Robbie Starnes as they come through three into four, we'll get a start. Man, they are bunched up top. Got out a little, a little out of shape in two, straightened it up. Schwartz banged the ball hard in three. Coming around for lap number two, it is Booper Bear. 77 starts, and Billy Moyer Jr. currently third. is flying up through there, Wayne, and he has to have some damage. He hit the wall hard in three. That right rear panel, he hit it again. Charlie Schwartz is moving up to the 10th spot. He's got a long ways to go, though, to try to make it up there. We've got a battle up front now as Moyer has gone into second and pulls up against Booper Mayer. Moyer all over Barron. He dives underneath him. Billy Moyer will go to the front. Murray Phillips is running third. Phillips is looking underneath Barron. Turn four. He's right up on him. McWilliams, I believe, in the 10 car, and he collects it. We're halfway through, Wayne. Cross flag, halfway through. Charlie Schwartz trying to make it around that 10 car of Audie McWilliams. McWilliams hit the wall. He's got some damage, but he's still pretty strong. Schwartz trying to go underneath him with a slide move, coming through three and four, and Charlie picks up the spot. The double zero of Mark Barber ahead of him. into the 27th annual World 100 heat race number four coming up next. Uh, 
I'm in it. Yeah, he turned us up a little bit. To Eldora for heat race number four. Starting on the pole in the one car will be Eddie Carrier Jr. who races out of Hazard, Kentucky. The three car off Steve Smith to the outside. Row two will be Earl Pearson Jr. And the 15 car off Stevie Francis to the outside in row two. Stevie, the defending stars champion and currently leads in points again this season. We have the B12 of Kevin Weaver, the 99 of Donnie Moran. Donnie Moran, I think Donnie's won this three times, hasn't he, Wayne? You're absolutely right. Then we have Jesse Lay running alongside him will be the cowboy John Gill, the 11 car of Jerry Bauer Sock, 68, the hit man Tim Hitt. He races out of Weston, West Virginia. The eight car of Ro Roddy Troyer. Alongside him will be Steve Barnett in the 89, the 112 of Jeff Knapper, the S44 of Scotty Earl, the 52 of Scott Sexton, the one car of Ronnie Fisher Jr., the 28 of Kevin Clayton. Driving the seven up car this weekend is Gary Green, the two car of Steve Cornelius, and the 01 of Jack Pennington. So Carrier in an excellent spot here on the pole, Wayne, if he can. Uh, Hold some of these cars off, but he's got Weaver, Stevie Francis, Donnie Moran. Well, he's got Steve Smith to run extremely well up here in uh, June at the Dream Race. Had a good finish there, I believe, in, in the Dream Race. And, but if he can get a good jump, he's where you need to be. He's on the pole. Earl Pearson, Jr. from Florida, who picked up a win early in the season down in, uh, in Florida, one of the first races of the year. As we're already up, we're ready to start a heat race number four. Doesn't take long to clip them off here, does it? Does it seem to you, Wayne, like uh, the track may be getting a little faster? I, I think it's getting a little bit, uh, a little bit slicker. You see the cushion moving up near the wall. I think in turn, it is. Between three and four, it's there, against, right against the wall. The wall. You're exactly right. Between the turns, it's right up against the concrete. That's the place to run. If you've got the nerve to run up against that wall, that's yeah. the fastest place on the racetrack right now. I think you'll see Donnie Moran doing that here. The key is if you've got the nerve. If you've got the nerve. Because there is, the cushion is about six inches off the wall in between three and four. Well, look at the cushion down here between one and two. It's about the same. If you can get up there. As Wayne said, if you've got the nerve to run up there, that's the quickest way around this track. Carrier and Smith, as Smith will take the lead. And here comes Moran. Three wide out of four. Side by side with Eddie Carrier Jr. On the first lap there, Eddie Carrier had to check up, and Stevie Francis had to check up, and that cost him because he lost two spots. We've got a spin out in between three and four. 33 cars. Let's see, Wayne, that's Jesse Lay. He's, he's sideways down here between yeah. three and four. That will bring the caution. 33 car sits there. Jesse Lay, he lost it down halfway between three and four. Cowboys moved up into four spot. John Gill. I think that they've got uh, Steve Smith out, out front there. He's in the right position, but I think Eddie Carrier Jr. will get his spot back around Donnie Moran. I think the pass occurred on the lap before the the caution came caution. out a little bit late as Lay was sideways down here between turns three and four. We'll see as the official is down on the track to line them up. Already advancing has been Matt Miller, Dale McDowell, Blackjack Box, Wade Knowles, 
Chattanooga Flash, Ronnie Johnson, Jimmy Mars, Booper Bear, Terry Phillips, Billy Moyer Jr. And we're in heat race number four, of course. The two fast qualifiers setting a new world 100 record was Scott Bloomquist as he cracked the 16 second mark as he in qualifying last night he turned a 15.858. Rick Eckert also broke the 16 second barrier as he stopped the clock at 15.962. Both cars pulled in on their heats, but they're assured spots, Wayne, if they can go. Yeah, and I, I think they'll make every effort to try to do that. I would think Both so. Both got cars that, that very, very capable of winning here tonight. And you were right on that call as Eddie Carrier has been placed in front of Donnie Moran. So Steve, Steve Smith, Eddie Carrier Jr., Donnie Moran, John Gill, Steve Francis, Tim Hitt, Earl Pearson Jr., Kevin Weaver. Who's 11 there? Bowersock, Jerry, Jerry Bowersock. Some good cars in this one. Moran looks low on Carrier. He's got him. up there and John Gill moves into third. Yeah. Donnie Moran pulling away now from Steve Smith. I think Smith has got a handling problem with that car. But John Gill pulling up near him. Well the caution's out now. Caution came out for uh, the two cars. The two got sideways Steve down. Cornelius. Yeah. That was a break for Stevie Francis break for a lot of these guys because Donnie Moran was checking out. Heavy damage to the right rear panel off the 33 car. That's Jesse Lay. He's the one that got out of shape down here between three and four. Go back to green next time around. Donnie Moran, Steve Smith, John Gill, Andy Carrier Jr., Steve Francis, Tim Hitt, Kevin Weaver, Earl Everson Jr., Jerry Bowersock. Four of those first six, seven cars are good ones, right? They certainly are. Moran gets on the throttle and just picking Steve Smith off was John Gill. may have a run on Smith as Carrier is going to drop all the way back to six spot. Kevin Weaver now goes around Carrier, puts it back to seven. Steve Francis and Steve Smith just about have contact there, going through turns one and two. And here comes the hit man, Tim Hit. He's after Steve Francis. Well, Francis is going to try to make it real low, and he's just about to make it work. Can't do it. He's running so low, Wayne, when he goes in the turns, it's the soft. It seems to be slowing Stevie up. But now he's going to try the high side there and see if he can gain some ground. As it's all Donnie Moran and John Gill. Got a straightaway lead on the third place battle there between Smith and Francis and Tim Hitt in the mix now. Kevin Weaver pulls up the challenge. Timmy Hitt now pulls alongside Steve Francis. Halfway this time under. As Kevin Weaver, the Flatlander, he's right up there with him. He's going to pick Hitt off. Among those four cars there is for the final transfer spot out of heat race number four. Boy, Francis better let it go if he's going to get around Smith here. Look, coming low on Francis. As Kevin Weaver. Caution is out. We've got a car that has two cars down in turn 
Is that got, John Keel down there? That That's is John, John Keel. Keel. He got he got in uh, to, I can't see the number on the That's other the one. That's the 0-1 of Jack Pennington. They got together hard down between turns one and two. Pennington looks like he's going to be all right, but now John Gill looks like his car may have a lot, lot of damage to it. Well, Pennington was being lapped. If it is, that's a tough break for John Gill, as the Cowboy was really hooked here this evening. 75 car, the Masterville car of John Gill is, in fact, going on the hook, and that is probably going to do John Gill for the night. Tough, tough break. But that's a break for Stevie Francis, if he can hold the Flatlander. Kevin Weaver off. We're under caution at Eldor Speedway, back with more in just a moment. Don't give us over 30, because they'll get him off there in no time. Washington's car has been taken off. No, he's still running in anyway. Wayne. Isn't he still out there? Anyway, John Gill, who had a strong run, uh, run going, he was really hooked here this evening. Well, he was, he's on the hook now. He and the 99 car of Donnie Moran were straight away ahead of the third place battle that was going on on the track. That'll move Stevie Francis up into that third spot. Right behind him will be him, the hit man hit. And Kevin Weaver will move Carrier up into the sixth spot. Of course, Eddie Carrier Jr. started on the pole. Looks like Gill's done for the evening, doesn't it? Yeah, he is done. The car's got a lot of damage to the side of it there. And it was, he got caught up there. He was involved. It was a, a car that he was lapping. That was Pennington. running down low and uh, it, it looks like it's still a little bit too soft down there. When he goes in low and hits the real soft stuff, he's losing some uh, valuable time. Well, Stevie's going to have a hard time holding Tim Hitt off because Tim Hitt's got faster as this race has progressed. We're about ready to go back to green. And uh, they both have to worry about Kevin Weaver. If, if Stevie can clear Smith, which he does, Good job. And Smith is going to be shuffled. Well, Francis tags the wall in turn two. Boy, they're shuffling spots now. Tim Hitt shuffled all the way back to seven. Jerry Bowersock's got around him. Kevin Weaver, the winner in that little shuffle, as he's currently sitting in second spot. Donnie Moran coming up on the 33 car to put him down a lap. Jesse Lay is the last car that's in there, Wayne, I believe. And, yeah, he's the one that's banged up here. You're right, as Kevin Weaver puts him down a, a lap. Only a couple more laps to go in this heat race. Continues to be Donnie Moran. He's got a straightaway lead over Weaver. Next car, he's put down uh, Steve Cornelius Steve just Cornelius. went down left. Yeah. White flag comes out for Donnie Moran. Out of the flag's down now, Kevin Weaver. And Steve Francis is now coming by. Moran wins.
wins it. Weaver comes across second spot. Stevie Francis has transferred in third spot. And a shuffle there, Stevie Smith, Tim Hitt, Jerry Bowersock, and Steve Barnett. Those four through seven cars are the cars that'll transfer on to the consolation race. But Moran, Kevin Weaver, and Steve Francis have made the World 100. That's it for heat race number four. Heat number five coming up next. We're ready for heat race number five from the high banks of Eldora Speedway. Barry Boyd along with Wayne Fugit starting on the pole in the one car, the Dunn Benson Ford of Clint Smith. To the outside, the F1 Clint Stone Flyer, Mike Duval. Duval, I'm sorry, from Cal Penn, South Carolina. The 12 car, who's really been on a roll, that's Rick Auckland. The 29 of Darrell Lanigan. The 89 of Marshall Green. The 31 of Skip R. Skip was real fast last night. The 17 car of Greg Williams. The 12 of Brian Stinson. The 4 car of John Lawhorn. The 1B of Jerry Rice. 91 of Brian Dunaway. The 71C of R.J. Conley. The 1X of Steve Kozinski. The 9 of Billy Drake. The 7 of Tony Carden. The 5 of Leslie Essery. The 99 car of Dennis, Dennis Partridge. The C9 of Steve Case Bolt Jr. The 222 of Mike Boland. And the 6 of Jeff Trees. So the car last night that was really getting around this track was Skip Arp. And he was awfully impressive. As Pace Truck will come off this time around and Clint Smith will start them. Clint Smith runs the number one. Dunn Benson Ford. He runs out of Georgia. Rick Auckland, Fargo, North Dakota, right up in tight in the back of it. And we're under green. Cars are going to clear one and two cleanly as the Flint Stone Flyer goes to the front. That may be short-lived as here comes Darrell Lanigan. Darrell Lanigan almost, almost had him that time, Barry, coming out of turn two. Now we got a big shuffle, shuffle of cars back there around 10th spot. Lanigan picked him off here, Wayne, in turn four. Darrell Lanigan, Mike Duval, the Flintstone Flyer runs second. Running third is Clint Smith. Rick Auckland runs fourth. We're getting a little bit of dust up here now. Caution is out now. 17 car Greg Williams here on the front straightaway is having some problems. I think he tapped the wall coming out of fourth. A lot of dust down there now, Wayne, uh, starting to build up. We're, uh, they're, they're running that cushion up so high. It's, the cushion is very, very narrow. The only place that it's even noticeable that there's any width at all to it is coming out of four and out of two. Other than that, the straights and between the turns, you have to put it right up against the wall. And Darrell Lanigan, I think Duvall may have come out of the best with that caution because Lanigan was running away with the race. He was as he was pulling away from the Flintstone Flyer, Mike Duvall from Cal Penn, South Carolina. Darrell Lanigan races out of Florence, Kentucky. Darrell runs some bush races. Sitting in that third spot is the 31 car. Uh, I thought that uh, possibly that's Skip Art, but 
I didn't see him pick Clint Smith off. I guess he did. Skip Barr fronts third. Clint Smith fourth. And Rick Auckland fifth. We're ready to get started once again. Landing going to take off right about now. There he goes. Good job. one and two, three wide, Rick Auckland caught in the middle. He's going to be shuffled way back. Auckland shuffled, he lost one spot. He's back to six now. Manny got pulling away from Duval. Skip Parr holds on to the third spot. R.J. Conley nearly into the wall there. He's battling with the 89 car. RJ does tag the wall. He's trying to get through. And he bangs big pile up down between one and two. As I can't see, Wayne, what number he got into. The yellow car. I think it's the 89 car, Marshall Green, that he had been battling with him. I'm not sure if that's the only two cars down there. I believe it is, though, because they had John Lawhorn mixed up with them, and Lawhorn's still circling the track. So Conley tagged him pretty good down uh, between turns one and two. Conley had an eel handling race car. It looked as, maybe as if he was yeah, he tagged about the, to get a flat. He tagged the wall, Wayne, over here between three and four. That and break about a half a lap to happen because you could see it in the making all the way down the front straightaway. He's still out there. Marshall Green still sitting there in turn number two. Marshall Green will need a tow. Well, now, now the car is moving. RJ Conley races out of Wheelersburg, Ohio. Leader, Darrell Lanigan. Vance Stone Flyer, Mike Duval runs second. Skip our third. Glenn Smith, a solid fourth. Well, Clint Smith's not on the racetrack. That's the 12 car there. Clint Smith's gone into the pits, I believe, Barry. I don't see him out there. It is. I just noticed that it was a white car, and Clint has left the track. So. That's the 12 car of Brian Stinson. I didn't see Clint leave. Wayne, did you see uh, no, anything happen to the car? I know that he lost a couple of spots there right before the caution came out and may have developed some kind of problem with the race car. I'm not sure. Well, that's Brian Stinson now running in the four spot. Now Clint Smith comes out, evidently he had a flat. He's coming trying to get back out onto the racetrack. Okay, Clint Smith did have a flat and he has returned to the track. And we'll go green next time, next full lap back around, we'll get the green flag. Darrell Lanigan, once again, had started to pull away from uh, Mike Duvall. Duvall, a regular at uh, Cherokee Speedway down in Gaffney. We've seen him right down there. I would, have, I would say if he has a home track, that would be it. Of course, Cal Penn, South Carolina, just a very short distance from the Cherokee. As Lanigan starts them. He apart, trying to take that second spot. Duval's going to hold him off.
once again out to about a 20, 25 car length lead. trying to take over exactly third. Stinson right there on uh, Skip Hart. And he goes around him easily. Hart comes back and he uh, they run side by side. Hart has regained the third spot. battle for that third transfer spot. And now it looks like Skip Hart may take second as he runs side by side with Mike Duvall. Duvall and the fans don't fly. Now Stinson back up. He picks Harp off. Hart comes back on him to hold the third spot. We've got a mess down here as Stinson bangs the wall between one and two. Then he gets clipped by, is that and the two car? It is the two car. Big pile up down here between one and two as Stinson tagged the wall. And the two car of... I don't think Stinson's at all very happy at that must have been what Mike. transpired was that Mike Bolin that tagged him that's who it was Bolin tried to run extremely low down the racetrack and there simply wasn't enough room there to do that well it's going to take a while to clear this up so let's take a short break and we'll be right back back at Eldora Speedway, Rossburg, Ohio. We are in the middle of heat race number five and a couple of cars have gone to the pits. 12 cars, Stinson. Also the one car, I believe, of Kozlowski has been taken into the pits on two separate incidents. Kozlowski going off the back straight away. Mechanical problems. Stinson, though, was collected in the accident between, between turns one and two. And we are just about set to go back to green flag racing. Darrell Lag in the leader. Mike Duvall currently in second. Skip R, the 31 cars in third. Rick Auckland in fourth place. John Lawhorn is rather fifth place. Lawhorn in sixth spot. Brian Dunaway seventh. R.J. Conley is in eighth spot, and the flagman does, in fact, give them the one lap to green. The race has pretty much belonged to Darrell Lanigan, this heat race, for the matter. The battle has been for second and third, and Lanigan, once again, will start them on the back straightaway. Tough break there uh, down between one and two. Right now, Wayne Lanigan is completely the class of this one as he's just getting away from Duval. Got a real battle as Skip Arp's trying to hold on to third spot. He's got a battle there, and Rick Auckland's pulling up there. One of the cars into the wall comes back out of it, though. Flyer Mike Duvall looking low, looking for that third spot. It's Gil Park. And right after him is Rick Hoffman. There's a lap car up between Duvall and Skip Park. White flag coming out this time by for Darrell Lanigan. Duvall nearly hits the wall coming through four. Lanigan 
comes by. He's a winner, and here's the battle coming to the stripe for third ball. That was Skip Arm. The other car was a lamp down. I believe the one car was a lamp down, Wayne. No, the one car uh, was your finisher, a third place finisher there. That's uh, Jerry Rice. One B car. Those three will go on to the feature race. The sixth and final heat race coming up next. We'll be back. Yeah, give us a minute. Hey. We're back for the sixth and final heat here from Eldora. And Wayne, we're going to have some real good cars in that B main. <laughs> as Rick I think right there as well. Some of those cars. But let's give you the lineup for the sixth heat here as it is making the pace lap. Starting on the pole will be the 45 off Gary May, the 0P off Chris Patterson, 27 off Bob Pullman, the G1 off David Gibson. David Gibson ran very well here last night. The 72 off Racing John Mason, the double zero off Reddy Smith, the favorite of everyone. We're underway. Shaver in the 30 car, Roger Long, Johnny Barnhart, Dan Sturgeon, Curtis Roberts, Johnny Johnson, Eddie Ickrin, Dick Potts, Rick Stone, Patterson into the wall. So Patterson tags the wall. Still running. your leader, followed by Patterson, then John Mason. That's your top three. Coming around for lap number two. 27 car Bob Pullman Jr. is currently now in third. Bob Pullman has taken over now going for a second spot. Right now Gary May is just checking out on the field. Good battle for a second. now slides up into the second spot in front of Patterson. And Mason now took time to look to the outside of Patterson. They come out of four, nearly three wide there. David Gibson in on the end. Caution comes out. And I think it is. It's a drive line, Wayne, laying right here on the front straight. Someone lost a drive line. I think it's from the uh, from the leader. I believe it is out of Gary May's car, but you can see it laying right here down the front straight, the drive line. Have your attention, please. Mike Renderly. Mike Renderly. It is from May as he's coasting into the pits. I put Bob Pullman, I believe, back up in the lead. That'll put Freddie Smith up within striking distance, too. He needed that. As uh, we talked a little bit last night, too, David Gibson was awfully fast here last night. And he is again tonight. Be Bob Pullman. I don't know if Patterson belongs there in the second. Uh, yeah, I think he does. Patterson, John Mason, David Gibson. I think it's uh, Shane Yoder. The eight car, then Freddie Smith, Steve Shaver. Steve Shaver. Donnie Barnhart. And we're just about ready to go back green. going to get underneath him out of turn two. Patterson, your new leader. Coleman runs second. John Mason, and here comes Freddie Smith. Freddie Smith 
runneth all over John Mason right now. Well, Shane, Shane Yoder gets under Freddie Smith and nearly picks him off. As it looks as if Freddie's going to make his move right now. Patterson got out of place there, and Mason got into the rear of him, and that's allowed Freddie to catch back up with him. Stevie Shaver in the 30 car now moving up. Steve Shaver is flying up through that field. Chris Patterson has just moved back to third as racing John Mason runs second. third spot. Shane Yoder goes around Patterson. See if he can hold him through the turn here. And Yoder banks it off the wall and that's low and Yoder's in fourth spot. We're halfway through. Good racing. Mason, Freddie Smith, your top three. I think there's a battle developing between John Mason and Bob Pullman, too, because Mason made a real quick run on him there, and then he's coming back at him once again. Shane Yoder is still right up there on Freddie Smith, too, Wayne. Freddie against the wall and Yoder up against him. They're strung out single file down the back straight as they come in to turn three. Steve Shaver banks it off turn three. Mason almost had Pullman, now he's going to try it low on him. Pullman cuts him off. coming out this time by. As Yoder and Smith both run oh, two ball. laps to go. White flag will be shown this time around. John Mason is taking over the lead. Bob Pullman Jr., Freddie Smith, the chain Yoder as they take the white flag. Steve Shaver running fifth. Mason pulling away now from Pullman. The big, big race. Straightaway. The big race now is Freddie doesn't seem to be handling well. And he's going to have to hold off Shane Yoder. Steve Shaver banks the wall hard in three. That's going to do it as your winner racing John Mason. Pullman will finish second. Freddie Smith third. The six heat races are in the books here at Eldora Speedway. 18 cars have qualified. Actually, 20 cars. Uh, Scott Bloomquist and Rick Eckert, the two qualifiers not to make it through the heat races. It's still up to the air whether they will be back. Most likely they will. But the consolation races are upcoming. The next on the agenda here, Eldora, to put the cap on the field for the 27th Annual World 100. We'll be back from Eldora in just a moment. You going to do the main? No. Let's, let's don't do the B main. Uh, back to Eldora for the B Main to set the field. And in the B Main we'll have the on the front row the 6M of Wendell Wallace and Rod Conley up there. Second row we'll pick them up as they come around. That'll be Starnes and Steve Smith. Row three looks like Skip Arp and Shane Ryoder. And you got Mark uh, Vineyard, Bob Pierce, Tim Hitt, Steve Shaver. Uh, it's hard to tell on the back straightaway now. 
I see 11 car Jerry Bauer, Sock, 12 car Rick Auckland. The 71 car Don O'Neill. Eddie Carrier out, is out there. See the double zero Mark Barber. Barber. Wayne, this B Main is just like a star show. It certainly is. The four car of John Lawhorn. 89 car of Steve Barnett. The one car of Eddie Carrier Sr. Charlie Schwartz, Charlie Schwartz, R.J. Conley, and I think that's the seven car there of Earl, Earl Pearson, Jr. So the 71C of Rod Conley, or that's R.J., I believe, in the 71C, isn't it? R.J. will start at the... He'll start in the back row alongside uh, Charlie Schwartz. The car's making the parade lap. Off the pole to start them will be Wendell Wallace. Rod Conley alongside him. Then we have Starn, Steve Smith. Bring you the added bonus here of the B main to set the field. Then we'll, after this one, we'll have a short intermission while the cars make final adjustments for the feature. Be four come out of this, right, Barry? Four cars will transfer. Top four. And Wallace starts on out of turn. be a start. They started a little bit too quick. Yeah, Wendell got a jump there. Wendell Wallace jumps the start, so we'll have a complete restart. Wallace gets a warning this time under. and Rick Hoffman will have to try to work through this field. So some, yeah, some real good metal back in the pack in this one, in the B-Main. Into four, or three rather, coming into four now, and we're about ready to start them one more time. Looks good like a start good start. This time. Yeah. Look up there now, and uh, especially look between three and four. There is no cushion. Absolutely, of course. We, that it may redevelop again, Barry, because they have watered the track and rolled the track in a little bit more. Shane Yoder, I thought he had a car that may have been able to transfer, and he's frustrated right now, sitting down there in his car at the entrance to the front straightaway. The right rear is flat uh, as. Well, he's got he's got front end suspension damage there in, in the steering. He uh, looks like probably a tie rod broken on the car. I think the right rear though was flat on Auckland. Oh, Auckland, Rick Auckland, uh, right rear. Uh, has Auckland gone into the pits? Uh, yeah, he's, okay. he had a right rear down, Wayne. Or he looked uh, as if that was the problem. So Rick's got a he's going to have a long way to come. A 
Shane Yoder is going to be put on the hook. He had a good car here tonight. The reason we're bringing you this B-Main is it's a, a star show you would see anywhere else. Rod Conley will start him off the pole. Front row is Rod Conley, Wendell Wallace, Steve Smith right there. Then we've got Starnes. Steve Shaver is going to have to try to work his way through the main. Charlie Schwartz. That's the 33 of Al Perky. Still haven't seen Rick come back out, but it looked to me like Wayne, he just had a right rear cut down. I'm not sure where Rick is pitted. It's hard to. What about 100 haulers on the infield here, and it's hard to look over them and, and spot his hauler. I didn't see any damage other than uh, the right rear. And now Shaver's heading to the pits. He's got a right rear. He certainly down. has. He's going to have to hurry. Well, we still haven't seen Rick, so uh, maybe it was more than uh, just that right tire, uh, right rear tire cut down. But we know that's what was wrong with Steve Shaver as he went to the pits right in front of us. And Shaver, they are working on the race car. Still trying to get Shane Yoder on the hook and we off the track. To, we need to find out here uh, about Rick Auckland because I didn't see any damage at all other than the tire. But it's, yeah, he is. There he is, Wayne. He's ready to come back. That was, uh, Rick had a right rear uh, cut down as he's trying to get back on the track now. Hey, you're just tuning in. We're in the B Main, the Constellation race at Eldora, updating you on uh, how the heat races at six heat races run. In the first heat race, Matt Miller in the seven car was a winner. Second place finisher was the 17M of Dale McDowell, who blew up as he crossed the finish line, actually on the white flag lap, and we do understand he has changed the motor in that car and will be ready for the feature race. Third place finisher in heat race number one is the three car, Jack Box. Heat race number two saw Mike Jewell your winner, rather Wade Knowles the winner, Ronnie Johnson second place, and Jimmy Mars finished the race in third spot. In race number three, Billy Moria Jr. ran off for that one. Terry Phillips finished second at Booper Bar, third place finisher. He'd race number four, Donnie Moran was an easy winner over Kevin Weaver and Steve Francis. All three of those transfer on to the feature race. And in heat race number six, Bob Pullman the win over John Mason and Freddie Smith. They make that, uh, I believe Mason won that one, uh, Wayne. Okay. So starting on the pole, I think, will be uh, John Mason. The Pullman, Mason, and, and Freddie Smith transferring. He raced number five. It was Darrell Lanigan, a winner. Mike Duvall finished second, and Jerry Rice in the 1B car, third place finisher. They finally got the eight car of Shane Yoder making progress with it toward the pits. And the 12 car is back out, so that was, uh, that was a problem. Uh, that was the only thing I could see on it was the right rear was cut. We got Auckland and Shaver, who but will start at the rear of the field. They both had to pit, and both with the same problem. They're capable capable of getting back through there, but there's a lot of good cars ahead of them. And both of them look like they've got some damage to the rear quarter panels of those cars, maybe a little bit of contact. Put the fender into the tire and cut it down. We'll get the one lap to go next time by. Well, we get one lap in. We get. They are starting single file, so we got one lap in. Rod Conley will start them. 
Wendell Wallace up tight on him. Steve Smith hanging in that third spot. Starnes runs forward. Now the field's going to have to get bunched up because they're they're spread out all the way around the track. A long way around the track. One car dropped down, 23 cars here in the, started with 24, now we have 23. Conley starts up on the back straightaway. Hitting. That's Skip Arp. That's Skip Arp. I think that's what brought the caution out. Skip Arp in the pits. I don't see any damage. Skip it Arp. looks like Skip's got a right front cut down. I think it may be something just a little bit more terminal than that because he's going kind of gingerly through the pits. He's not in any kind of hurry, so... Can you imagine a B-Main with Steve Shaver at the end of the field? Right back there with him, Rick Goffman. Some of the biggest names in the business. And Charlie Swartz right behind him now because of caution. You're right there, Charlie Swartz did have a spin. And it's gone to the back of the pack. But Wayne, look at this. Look at the end of, the, of this B main, those cars at the rear. You've got Rick Offman back there, Steve Shaver, Charlie Schwartz. These guys got these, a lot of wins among the you do. bottom 10 race cars. That's on final 10, rather. When the Wallace starts it. now trying to go around Starnes. Bob Pierce is really coming hard. It's all cool one. Let it go. As he's trying to pick off Starnes, he's going to have to clear him to get to Steve Smith. got a pile up down here. Heavy damage. Uh, Steve Shaver. Earl, Earl Pearson enough. Jr. looks like has hit the wall. Hard lick to the wall. He and Shaver got together. Shaver still running, but the other car, that's the seven car, Wayne. Well, Shaver is going in, too. So I think both of them are. And Rick, Rick Auckland has a lot of damage to his car. 
That is not Earl Pearson, that is Mark Miner in the seven car. So Mark Miner and Steve Shaver, they really locked them up down here in turn four. Wendell Wallace was checking out. Rod Conley had him in his side. Steve Smith still runs third. Starnes fourth. And the tall, cool one in the fifth spot. That being Bob Pierce. Wallace is going to start him this time around. He moved into fourth, now he's trying to get around Steve Smith. He wants that transfer spot, he may, he's got him, I believe. He may have him coming out of four, side by side. Steve Smith's gonna hold him off. Pierce gets that run down the back straight. This time he could clear him coming out of four. Beat him in the corner. And down the back straight is where Pierce is strong, so he has taken the third spot. Now he's after Rod Conley. Big Hoffman, he's got heavy damage to the right side of that 12 car. He's in fifth, now he's going for fourth, Barry. He may be as fast as any car out there right now. If he can clear Smith, he'll have a shot at Rod Conley. Looks like right now Steve Smith may be holding him up. coming out of four as they're side by side. Now here comes Tim Hitt after Rod Conley. White, white flag this time. As Hitt looks low on Conley. Conley's going to hold him off out of two. What a race. Here was Wendell Wallace, Bob Pierce, and Rob Conley, Conley, Tim Hitt, and those four will transfer onto the feature race. Starnes was right there, so was uh, Smith. Gonna be main as you will ever see. So the field is set. The cars that will be in our 100 lap feature, the 27th annual World 100, 30,000 to win. We'll be back shortly after some adjustments are made to the cars and the big show will take place in a very short while.
Okay. 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 No. Wayne, they gonna start 24. Start 24 cars. We're back at Eldora for the 100 lap feature and the lineup as we gave it to you. The order has just been given as the engines have been fired. Starting on the pole, we'll run through them quickly for you again is racing John Mason. Darrell Lanigan to the outside. Row two, Donnie Moran and Billy Moyer Jr. Row three, Ronnie Johnson. Miller to 7M, the Miller car to the outside of him. Dale McDowell in the 17M. Running alongside him will be the 28M off Jimmy Mars. The 75 off Phillips in the fifth row. To the outside, Kevin Weaver in the B12. Row six, the Flintstone Flyer, Mike Duvall. To the outside of him, the 27 of Bob Pullman. Row seven, the B4 off Blackjack Boggs. To the outside, the 9J of Mike Jewell. Row 8, the double zero of Booper Bear. To the outside, the 15 of Stevie Francis. Row 9 is the 1B of Rice. To the outside of him, the double zero of Freddie Smith. Row 10, the zero car of Scott Bloomquist. To the outside, the 24 of Rick Eckert. Row number 11 is the 6M of Wendell Wallace. Alongside him will be the 32 of Bob Pierce. The 70, the final row, row number 12 to end your field of 24 cars will be the 71 car of Rod Conley. And alongside him, the 68 car of Tim Hitt. Pace truck is on and cars are making the pace laps double pile. The best of the very best, some of the finest cars in the world. Are you any surprises about when you look around the field here? Wayne, I really don't see any surprises. These are all good drivers. The surprise is that some of the drivers that didn't make it, because we absolutely had uh, some of the, uh, we had all of them. As I ran over in some of the stats here, we had uh, 23 states represented, uh, plus Canada and Australia. We had 242 cars try to make this show. These are the 24 that made it. And one car, probably one of the, Hottest drivers on the circuit they able to make the show. Rick Alcorn. Rick Alcorn. Is who you're talking about, absolutely. Some beautiful cars out making the uh, laps around. Now they run four wide in the parade lap. You, ju you just have to see this. Awesome. 24 of the greatest cars you will ever see and the greatest drivers that will ever strap in. It's kind of breathtaking, Wayne, seeing these cars go around four wide. It always is. is. As 
as the crowd, and it is a capacity crowd. Turn number four, it's your turn now. Let's get them fired up and ready to go. As we're almost ready to rumble. Now they fall back into double foul. John Mason, Darrell Lanigan will start them on the front row. Good to see racing John Mason up there on, on that pole. He's had a tough run of luck here lately. Donnie Moran right there, Billy Moyer, Chattanooga Flash, Ronnie Johnson. There's one car there that I think that a lot of a lot of fans would not recognize, the seven car Matt Miller. His first, that would be the first surprise. World 100. You've got some others that I mentioned earlier here too, Wayne, that the two youngest drivers uh, are in this is Dwayne Chamberlain and Joe Godsey that tried to make the race. Right. They tried to make it. But Fail to, of course. We're being given, I think we're being given one to go, aren't we? You're absolutely right. A half a lap until we'll see the start of the 27th annual World 100. $30,000 of Earl Baltus' money here awaits him. The one that everyone wants to win as racing John Mason will start them. Cars tightly bunched. Mason gets on the throttle and here we go. Billy Moyer quickly trying to get through there. Here comes Donnie Moran to the front. Mason drops to fourth. It is Darrell Lanigan on the point. Billy Moyer Jr. currently second, Donnie Moran's third, and then John Mason and Ronnie Johnson as they come by for lap number one. As they fly around this track, Billy Moyer Jr. looks high on Darrell Lanigan. He's not going to clear him there. Donnie Moran looks low. We're going three wide out of turn four. Moyer runs side by side. Moran gets a little out of shape. Straightens it up as Moyer holds on to second. Here comes Ronnie Johnson in that fifth spot. Cars just all single foul now all the way around the track. They'll stretch halfway around the track. They come back around four laps complete. It is Darrell Anakin. Billy Moyer Jr., Donnie Moran, John Mason, Ronnie Johnson, Matt Miller, 17 cars, Dale McDowell, Jimmy Mars, Terry Phillips, Kevin Weaver, Jack Fox, Steve Ferguson. Three wide again as they try to, they do clear turn. Number four, Darrell Lanigan, Billy Moyer Jr., all over him. Donnie Moran tries to stick a nose up under Billy Moyer. It's not going to work. He throws it in hard in three. He may have him coming out side by side. Billy Moyer holds him off. Again, Moran throws that nose underneath him. And they tap. Moran gets out of shape. Now Moyer sets his sights on Darrell Lanigan. Top five cars have pulled about a half a straightaway length away from the sixth place car of Miller. And in about four or five laps, we may see some lap traffic come into play as Donnie Moran tries to make a move once again on Billy Moyer Jr. That is, that's a battle that's been shaping up as they run side by side. Now Moyer has about 10 car lamps on Moran. Right there is Mason. And we have Ronnie Johnson running fifth. Five car Terry Phillips had a straight with the wall there, and Jimmy Morris trying to take over that spot. We got a him. pass here, Wayne, down the back straight. John Mason just got around Moran. Billy Moyer, 
Darrell Lanigan continues to lead. Five-car breakaway. it up a little bit on Darrell Lanigan as Lanigan comes up on 71R of Ron Conley. We have Gossip banging back through the field. Scott Blomquist trying to get around Freddie Smith. Blomquist and Smith, neither one, have really made any kind of moves toward the front. Now, Rick Eckert running with Blomquist and Smith and just a little ways ahead of the leaders. Darrell Lanigan, he's being held off by Rod Conley. Now Lanigan will clear him low. Lanigan dealing with lap traffic. Shooting underneath him is Billy Moyer. Here comes Mason. Next car to be picked off will be Wendell Wallace. Lanigan going low on Wallace. Wallace is going to hold him off. Moyer to the inside. We've got a lead change. Side by side, out of four. Lanigan holds him off. Lanigan trying to split traffic. He's having trouble with Wallace. Clears him. Also picks Booper Bear off. Right here comes Moyer. Moyer also clears the traffic. Mason trying to get through. Donnie Moran trying to get through as Billy Moyer Jr. right up on Darrell Lane. is pulled up. He's got a cut tire. That'll bring a caution. Caution flies as Freddie Smith, I believe he's got a, a cut tire on probably a front left. I didn't see any contact. Did you, Wayne? No, but the car does show contact. The right rear quarter panel and the left front corner of the car shows some damage. I'm not sure Freddie was racing in a pack with Scott Blomquist. I think I see the nine car of Mike Jewell with some damage to the left rear, so maybe there was some contact with that race car. Wendell Wallace is pitting. Well, Wallace went a lap down. Uh, he's hurrying into the pits, maybe go on, uh, maybe go to a different tire selection. Freddie Smith, I think there may be something else wrong with that race car besides a flat tire, because he's sitting, sitting here right on the front straightaway. Car is totally disabled. World 100 Jinx has bitten Freddie Smith once again. Freddie Smith from the get-go had handling problems. He was all over the track. Fortunate to make the feature as we noticed. He does have damage to it now. I didn't see any contact, but he had handling problems. And he does have a left front tire cut down, I believe. So that's what he's pointing towards. Well, I think it's a little more than that, Barry. He's maybe a uh, tie rod end or something. He's got something broke under the left front. As Darrell Lanigan, he was getting a lot of pressure there from Billy Moyer. Luca Bear, he's already down a lap. John Mason will run in the third spot. Donnie Moran runs fourth. Ronnie Johnson fifth. Rod Conley down a, a lap. the seven car Matt Miller, Dale 
Kyle McDowell, Terry Phillips, Kevin Weaver, Blackjack Boggs, and Stevie Francis. Jimmy Mars just ahead of those two. So Bloomquist really hasn't made his move yet, Wayne, or we haven't seen much from him yet. Long way to go, though. Bob Pullman, Mike Jewell, Scott Bloomquist. That's going to do it for Freddie. They're putting yeah. him on the hook, Wayne. Freddie's got a terminal problem, as I was telling the folks there. World 100 has not been good to Freddie Smith. He won the first annual, the inaugural Dream 100 here. Other than that, I don't think Freddie's got a feature win here. A major feature win. As Freddie's car has been put on the hook, and that'll do it for him. Tough break for the veteran. Christopher Farms double zero car. Well, we'll see on the restart here how Darrell Lanigan handles this because Moyer is going to be right up on him. Then there's a lap car between the third place car of Racing John Mason. Mason quick early on. Then Donnie Moran and Ronnie Johnson. Blackjack Boggs has started to make a move. He's moved up through the field. Looking for a restart this time by as Darrell Lanigan does start on the back stretch and we're back underway. As John Mason just picked off, well, he was in front of Moran, so that wasn't a lead change, but Ronnie Johnson is coming after Moran. Moran put, picked off the double zero of Booper Bear lap car, and Booper Bear's gone into the pits. Lanigan still holds on to that lead. Once again, a five-car breakaway. Now we've got going trying to get underneath Mason. And Moran, it won't work. As they thunder into turn three, it's still Darrell Lanigan running right up against the wall. Great, Lanigan holds him off through the turns. Top five cars running the identical line. Jack Fox had tried to get around Kevin Weaver and couldn't do it. Now Kevin Weaver. Looking at Terry Phillips now in the front straightaway here. And Scott Blumquist trying to make a move through the field. He's trying to work on Stevie Francis. Now Box goes around Weaver as Weaver got sideways coming out of turn number two. Jack Box goes up. Looks like he just the wall. As Box made the sparks fly off the wall in turn four. Car seems to be okay. He kept his position in front of Weaver. Jack Box currently in the ninth spot now. Weaver is 10. Scott Bloom was up to 12. They're battling Stevie Francis for 12. Moran tried to go low on Mason again. He held him off. Lanigan's coming up on some heavy traffic. Scott Bloomquist has picked off 
Steve Francis and Scott Blumquist now. Looks like his car may be coming to him, Barry. Next one ahead of him is the 28 car of Jimmy Mars. And he's going underneath Jimmy Mars with ease. Well, Mars holds him off that time. Lanning closes Lanning and closing in on Pierce and Mike Duval in the Flintstone flyer. Lanigan got a little bit high. They get, gave Moyer an opening. He tightens up on him. He's hooked on that bumper right now. He is hooked. And Mason all over Moyer. You can throw a blanket over those three. Lanigan looks high. Moyer hit the wall that time, Barry. He's trying to clear the Flintstone flyer, and Lanigan will put him a lap down. Moran slides in front of Mason. That's Billy Moyer still tracking Darrell Lanigan. and runs fourth, Ronnie Johnson fifth. Barry, I don't know how long Donnie Moran can battle with a race car that he's constantly tapping the wall with because each and every time around he's nicking the wall. Now Darrell Lanigan had some problems coming out of two there. That's allowed Moyer to get up near him. Moyer may try to use a lap car or a car nearly a lap down of Bob Pierce to try to get around him here. Lanigan will put Bob Pierce a lap down. Pierce holds him off. And Moyer to the inside. Moyer, your new leader. As Lanigan slips Moyer to the front. about a 15 car land stretches it out 20 on oh, Darrell Lanigan. Good battle there between Mason and Moran. Top five cars are exactly a half a lap ahead of the sixth place car. Moyer with some contact there with Mike Jewell as he went around him and Lanigan is going to have to try to get around him as well. Moyer, he'll, he'll be catching traffic shortly. Caution is out. As let's see what the caution's for. It must be debris. I don't 68 see. 68 car, I think a Tim hit on the back straightaway is going into the pits. So Tim hit has taken it into the pits on the back straight. Some of these cars needed that because especially uh, Steve Francis, Rick Ecker. Billy Moyer was closing in. I don't think that's what Moyer wanted to see exactly, though, because he was pulling out, Wayne. He was checking out. Well, his car is is a lot better on uh, on hot tires than what he does when he's when his tire cools off. He's gambling with full fuel, uh, tire pressure tonight, and he's hoping this will not be a long caution, and I don't think it will. I can tell you a car that's been right there that is still well within striking distance is the 72 of John Mason. Well, we had a, Mike Jewell goes into the pits, had a five car breakaway. They had a half a lap lead over the sixth place car of Matt Miller. So here's the way they run. It's Billy Moyer Jr., Darrell Lanigan, Donnie Moran. Bob Pierce is a lap down. John Mason runs fourth. Ronnie Johnson fifth. Flintstone Fire a lap down. Rod Conley a lap down. I believe McDowell may be running in the next spot. Then Blackjack Boggs, Scott Bloomquist will pick them up as they come around. Depending on how long this cost will go, we may see a lead change here. 
Moyer has won the World 100 three times. So has Moran. Darrell Lanigan sits between those two cars in second spot, who's biggest hope right now is to pick up a win here tonight, as is about 20 other drivers. Moran's got a lot of sheet, <laughs> sheet metal damage to the right rear of that car. We've got a car still pulled up down here. That's Bob, Bob Pierce, I think. Bob Pierce is a lap down. Yes. I th well, I think Bob is trying to confer that he is a lap down. And going back out onto the track is, can you pick that number up from here? That's Mike Jewell there in the nine car, back on Mike the track. Jewell. Okay. Let's see, I think, I think Bob Pierce is going into the pits. He's got a left front that's gone down. One to go. They're working on the 32 car, but he's going to. He was already probably go one. down. Go down a, another lap, at least two, probably. As we go back to green. Here we go. Lanigan looks low on Moyer. Three wide out of four. Moyer holds him off. able to run lower on the track than anybody right now. Here comes Moran looking for a second. As they're really banging the wall in turn three. Scott Bloopus is quickly moving up on Jack Fox. He's looking, he squeezes in between Conley, a lap car, and now he's after Box. They come out of four side by side. Box holds him off. Moyer stretches. Moyer tags the wall in three. Tagged it pretty hard. Battle continues. Jack Fox hits the wall. Jack Fox in six spot. Bloom was right behind him in seven. Rand just got went into second spot. Jack Boggs is having all kinds of problems. Lanigan just broke, Wayne. Something's wrong with Darrell Lanigan. You're absolutely right. Lanigan has slowed here on the front straightaway. As it's Boyer, Moran, We will not, not go to caution, though. Lanigan makes it into the pits. Warrior, Donnie Moran, John Mason. Running fourth is Ronnie Johnson. Fifth is Blackjack Fogg. Sixth is Scott Brooklyn. It's been a real battle between Blackjack Fogg. change here. Moran can't clear him. Very shortly they'll be in some extremely heavy traffic. Moyer, Moyer hits the wall once again. Moyer got a little bit out of shape there. Moran right on him. Moran. Moyer's car 
car seems to be going away a little bit. Junior, and he'll try to put him a lap down. Moran is going through the lap traffic. Side by side, Jack Boggs and Scott Bloomquist. Billy Moyer had a shot there at the lead as Moran got sideways. He tried to get around Coleman and couldn't do it. Now Moran's lost a little something, and Moyer is right on his tail. be a spot that has been a battle between Bloomquist and Boggs. And they have closed on Ronnie Johnson. And John Mason just clears Tim Hitt. He's up within striking distance. Jack now. Boggs brushes the wall once again. He was side by side with Ronnie Johnson. We've got a three-way battle there for the Bloomquist fifth Bloomquist is going to clear Boggs. Bloomquist gets around Blackjack Boggs and he's after Ronnie Johnson. Here comes Boggs back. Four wide out of four. All right, there's some dangerous lap traffic right ahead of the leader. There's about seven or eight cars. Some of those cars still on the lead lap, but Nonetheless, they're slower than the leaders, and they're going to have to get around them in the next three or four laps. Warriors right back up there on Moran right now. So is Mason. Mason is right there. Warrior. Ronnie Moran still the leader. Billy Moyer currently is second. John Mason is third. Scott Lucas now has moved into fourth spot. Ronnie Johnson is fifth, and Jack Boggs is sixth. Moran finally got around the 27th car of Bob Pullman, and he's got three wide racing in front of him. Jimmy Mars banged up pretty bad. He's gone down to the low side of the track. Moran gets around a couple of cars. That's Rick Eckert and Steve Francis. Let's see, Eckert's going to try to hold him off on the inside. Now he's got Kevin Weaver and the 75 car Terry Phillips ahead of him. He'll try to go low, three wide on those two. Moran just picking them off. Moyer's Moyer with him, too. Seven car Miller nearly getting into the wall in front of the leaders and pulls it off. He may have a move on Moran here. Warrior glued to him. He's as fast as Moran at this point. Moran goes underneath Matt Miller. Now 
Now tries to get around Dale McDowell as they come out of four. Look now, but Scott Bloomquist is coming. Scott Bloomquist is He's third in the third is, place. He is running third and he is coming hard. And Bloomquist is flying through the field. Starting what 20th, I believe, and he is up to third. He did start 20th. get away from him because he is hooked right now. I think Billy Moyer has a terrible handling, handling race car right now. He's struggling through the turns. Dale McDowell just waved Bloomquist around. And Wayne, he is closing in. Bloomquist is coming. If Rick Anker will do battle with him or let him go. Lumquist having trouble getting around Rick Anker. He dives low, turn three is where he has made most of his passes. Mike Duvall, I believe, that slowed on the back straightaway. This may bring out a caution as he dives down to the inside of the track. He may be able to make it to the infield. He will make it to the infield. No caution. Johnson. No, John Mason still up in fourth. Ronnie Johnson field. Rick Anker is giving Bloomquist fits. He cannot clear him. Now Moran goes around Phillips and Phillips banks it off the wall. I think it's going to slide underneath. Hanker's going to let him go by. He does. Next car Bloomquist needs to pick off is Billy Moyer. As he's up into that third spot. But Donnie Moran is stretching the lead out. Moyer tags the wall between three and four. Car Matt Miller once again against the wall coming through three and four, and that's just ahead of the leaders. Donnie Moran coming back up on Rod Conley in the 71 R car, about to put him another lap down. And Scott Bloomquist is ready to make a move on Billy Moyer. He dives low, he may have him. Down the front straight, Moyer holds him off. have to be hoping that the caution flag will wave very soon because Moran's probably got a half a straightaway length lead over him. Right 
right now, I think Blumquist is the fastest car out there. As Boggs is all over Ronnie Johnson. Blumquist got around Moyer as Moyer went too high up on the wall. So now Moyer falls to third and Blumquist sets his sights on Donnie Moran. He's come from 20th up to second and there's two lap cars, the seven car of Matt Miller and the 71 of Rod Conley to separate the leader, Donnie Moran, and the zero car of Scott Blumquist. Blumquist is trying to put Conley another lap down. quickly underneath him. Now one, one car away between him and Moran. Murray, I think that Scott Blomquist has conserved his tires, and we've got a spin. Oh, no! The seventh car spun in front of Blomquist, and Mur Moyer's hooked up into it. Moyer what a Blomquist. Crash. What a turn of events. And I think Blomquist kept it going. Blomquist kept the car Let's going. see this ruling. Moyer has stopped on the track, as well as the seventh car. Blomquist comes across in. Blomquist got caught up in that as the seven car banged the wall. Blomquist Moyer... stayed in second place despite all that happened. Let's see what the ruling is here as Scott Blomquist had nowhere to go. Blomquist took about, a, about three spins after he was hit, collected by the seven car. He doesn't seem to be. Yeah, oh gosh, the side is. I didn't think he was torn up that bad. Yeah, the seven car came into him, and then the 21 car came into the side of Bloomquist. The 21, Bloomquist, though he did not uh, stop on the track, was spinning on the track, pretty much kept it going. Well, we, we've got a couple cars going to be put on the hook here. Let's take a real short break, and we'll be right back. Oh, it won't be long now, honey. Who won? We're back here at Eldora. Strange turn of events as we have five cars on the lead lap. Scott Bloomquist now runs second with the entire right side of that car caved in. Your leader, Donnie Moran. Bloomquist runs second. Running third is John Mason. On the restart, Bloomquist. Conley lets Bloomquist go around him, and he's right on the tail of Donnie Moran. Jack Boggs now makes a move as he runs fifth. He just cleared Ronnie Johnson, so he's running. Boggs is fourth, fourth. and working on third right now. Only five cars on the lead lap. Johnson being held up a little bit there as he's trying to get around Kevin Weaver. Boggs hits the wall hard in three, but he keeps it, keeps it going. Blomquist, after that crash, has slowed considerably as Moran pulling away from him. Donnie Moran, then Scott Bloomquist in the lap car of Rod Conley and Rick Eckert. Also Terry Phillips as Boggs collects John Mason. Both of them bump a little bit and Mason takes over the spot. As Boggs has banged the walls and turns two and three several times. Boggs got around Mason and then Mason came back and got it. Now Jack Boggs side by side with him by the front straightaway. Mason leads that lap. Ronnie Johnson runs fifth. He's last car on the lead lap. And Donnie Moran's got a straightaway lead over Bloomquist. Well, Ron, uh, it appears to me, Wayne, after that crash, Bloomquist is a lot slower than he was. Bloomquist seemed to get faster there the longer he run, and Moran seemed to slow down, so that's going to set up, I think, a pretty good finish. Johnson right behind Jack Boggs. 
Dale McDowell into the wall. He keeps it going. Got a half lap lead now for Moran over Bloomquist. John Mason runs third, Jack Box fourth, Ronnie Johnson field. Those are the only cars on the lead lap. Bids to be the first four time winner of the World 100. Bloomquist, how are you? starting to show some signs now, Barry, of getting a little bit loose. Bloomquist is, he doesn't have much left, I don't think, Wayne, as Dale McDowell's just gone to the pits. John Mason hit the wall hard in four. They banged the wall down there between three and four all evening. Mason currently in third. He's got three lap cars just ahead of him. Separate him from the second place car, Scott Blumquist. First one he'll have to pick off is Terry Phillips, and he can't do it as they go into the one and two. Jack Box pulls up now on John Mason with Ronnie Johnson right behind him. And Boggs picks off Mason. He'll pick up a spot. Boggs gets into the wall. They race side by side. Boggs will get the spot. He now runs third. Ronnie Johnson right on John Mason. Donnie Moran stretching the lead out over Bloopus. White flag, white flag go, is flying as this time under Donnie Moran. Take the checker, Donnie Moran, the first to ever win the World 100 four times. Finishing second will be Scott Bloomquist. Crossing the line in the third spot will be Blackjack Box, fourth John Mason, and Ronnie Johnson will finish fifth. An exciting race it was as I think Bloomquist may have had a car for him there, Wayne, had he not got caught up down here in turn two. I think two. you're right. I think that Bloomquist uh, had some damage done to that car. Right side had problems with it. You know, Barry, there's been a lot of talk about uh, weigh-ins tonight, more so than normal. Let's than hold on. on. Yeah, let's wait until uh, we get uh, these weigh-ins. Bloomquist has got a car that it looks like is... Uh, about half a car. Half a car. I don't see how he drove it around the racetrack. There was nowhere for him to go. Bloomquist crossing the scales right now. We'll wait till we get the thumbs up on Bloomquist's car. Thumbs up, so Scott Bloomquist is legal. He'll get the second place finish. Now pulling on the scales is Blackjack Boggs. A lot of people gathered around. Wanna... Boggs is legal. He'll finish third. Now the winner, Donnie Moran, pulls up. Well, race fans, as we get ready to go here with the victory lane ceremony, how about a nice round of applause for all 24 drivers, 45 minutes. To and Moran is legal, so that is your winner. The first time, or the first four-time winner of the World 100, as Jeff Purvis has won it three times, so has Billy Moyer. Donnie Moran, this is fourth.
exciting race it was. And Bloomquist appeared to have the stronger car when he got caught up in the incident in turn two. Then his chances were completely lost. Blackjack Boggs was probably, had, had he uh, gotten through a little quicker, he may have had a shot at him, Wayne. Well, Boggs had, had a problem all night long staying off the wall, as did several of the race cars. Uh, John Mason stayed on the wall Mason, down in three. A bunch of race cars, as absolutely no cushion whatsoever on the racetrack uh, in the feature race. And it was uh, run up against the wall and tapped the wall. And the 99 car of Donnie Moran pretty much did the same thing, especially early on in the race, as Moran pulls up in front of the stage. Donnie Moran, the winner of the 1997 World 100. Well, got out of the car right now. As Moran puts his fist in the air, we'll wrap it up here from Eldora Speedway. Donnie Moran, your official winner of the 27th Annual World 100. I'm Wayne Fugit for Barry Boyd. We'll see you next time. We're out of here, girl. We're, go we're getting ready to break her stuff down. Thanks, Ray. Well, as she comes up on the stage, a very happy camper. Now that everybody's in team, once again, ladies and gentlemen, your 1997 World 100 winner, Tony Moran. Well, Tommy, I'll tell you what, I've known you for a long time. I don't think I've ever seen you as happy as what you are right now. Uh, what can I say? As the gym performs, parts of Master Bill Caffey, the official motorsports were actually, what can I say, all my sponsors, Charlie, uh, Pro Shops, Mike, uh, Kenny D, Low Tip Braking, Hydro, and uh, all you fans here at Eldora Speedway. Kenny <laughs> Snoko, Eddie and Linda, uh, Ohio Valley Designs, does the decal decals on the car. You know, all our sponsors, uh, Basil Oil, you know, thanks to Snowco, they give us that fuel and make this car really perform well. Tell you what, the number 99 car, a lot of folks up top were saying, you know, you look at the starting field, Moran and Moyer on row number two, looks as though it could be between those two. You were able to get the lead for Billy on lap number 48 with one of those patented slide jobs over there in turn number three and four. Is that the only way you can do it, or did your sprint car buddy Charlie Kutcher say, man, you gotta do it? Uh, he was coaching me the whole race. Uh, you know, I seen the move and uh, I just said, well, time to go for it. Uh, they run as hard and fast and uh, my car doesn't work about one way around the racetrack tonight and I just had to drive that way the whole race and, uh, you know, things worked out super. Also, about the three-quarter mark through the race, heavy lap traffic. That's probably an understatement. I mean, it looked like a New York City traffic jam out there. You had your hands full trying to get through that traffic and keep those other guys behind you. Oh yeah, uh, you know, we got in there and it dropped my rhythm messed up a little bit. Uh, I finally got through it. I think Billy picked his nose up under me there one time. And uh, I've seen him get an incident there. But, uh, you know, I want to say a special thanks to my family, my wife. Uh, my poor kids just had a baby boy last season. And we brought him with him. So they said that's number four. So I guess the best is world number four. Pretty good analogy there. That works out for you. And one last question I do have to ask you. Once you got through the lap traffic, you came into turn number four that one lap, and we saw the front end of that car take off for the wall. Did you hit the cushion wrong? No, uh, right below the cushion, there's a little bit of rubbish down there, and the uh, front tire hit it. The car set up pretty tight, and it just took off on me, and, uh, you know, lucky enough, I wasn't so far out of control, I didn't want to catch the people going. The only other time I think you were in trouble was coming in with that checkered flag. I know you were a happy camper. That left hand came out the window, and you just about bring her sideways across the start finish line. I didn't really do that, but that's the kind of way that ended up. But, you know, like I was saying, thanks all the crew. Toma, he does a super good, good job. Uh, I can't say enough about that guy. Uh, Tim's helped us, uh, you know, uh, Charlie, uh, Vicky. Uh, my father-in-law sells our t-shirts up there at T-Shirt Alley. Uh, just everybody at Pro Shops, everybody down at Master Bill with us. He did a heck of a good job fixing his cardboard. So we had it out here in the green. Oh, where's Albert? Kind of got tore up a little bit. Uh, he reached the front and rear. Did a super good job on it. Uh, 